after the sentencing, and he's out to sea, the rest of the story documents the changes that dramatically occur within Philip Nolan. By my count, there are four or five or six very conspicuously important moments where there's a kind of transformation of heart and soul. Why does it turn out to be the case that having the United States never being spoken of in his presence turns out to be such a searing punishment for him? If he is that man that we were characterizing before, that noble, ambitious, uh, craving for honor and glory man, he suddenly has driven home to him. He will be unwept, unsung. He, in a way, for the first time, has to confront his, uh, his extreme egotism. Um, and uh, what he realizes here is that in that kind of uh, uh, atomistic individualism, um, he's in fact going to be wretched. I think what Amy read afterwards is uh, sort of beats him over the head that um, the honor that he seeks can only be had by people who actually have a country that will honor them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the first point is this, this uh, assault on his self-centeredness, which I think he feels amidst this company before whom he has to read about himself um, in, in this collectivity aboard a ship which is now the, the only community he has. It's not simply a matter of being self-centered. I don't think he regrets that. Yeah, fair enough. What he regrets is that he is somebody and he's going to become nobody. To enjoy enduring honor, one has to have a country. And, 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 and be and of it. Be and of it. it. And in it.